Christos was Kres. Today we have a privilege of welcoming in our studio, Jeve TV, uh, two hierarchs from the Nordic countries, His Eminence Anders Cardinal Arborelius, Bishop of Stockholm from Sweden, and His Excellency Eric Varden, Bishop of Trondheim from Norway. Your Eminence, Your Excellency, welcome to our studio in Ukraine. Great to have you here with us. Thank you very Thank you much. So much. So, I would like to begin with the first questions. Since the outbreak of the full-scale Russian military aggression, we have seen a number of various delegations from foreign countries visiting uh, Ukraine. And that includes also representatives of bishops' conferences from all over the Europe and other countries. So may I ask you the question, what is the purpose of your visit to Ukraine? The first thing is to show our solidarity, that we are united with you in love. You know, we know that you suffer and we want to show that we are with you. And we also have so many Ukrainians in our countries, so we know their needs and we just want to show that we are brothers and sisters with you. You know, our, our deep solidarity with the whole Ukrainian people and our special communion with the Ukrainian church. Um, and also based on the fact that for us, uh, Ukraine isn't actually all that far away in, in, in the medieval history of our countries. Um, there were constant links uh, that the patron saint of Norway, um, just before the battle in which he went to his death in the year 1030, spent a long time as the guest of um, Duke Yaroslav um, in this region. Uh, so we feel a visceral bond with Ukraine. Yeah. Thank you. So that's, that's really great to, to be um, uh, mindful of this uh, historical link, but also to see how this solidarity is uh, continued in, uh, mm. in our time. And um, I would like to uh, have a question to His Eminence. Uh, the, I know that the last time you visited Ukraine was um, about 10 years ago. It was on a different occasion. Now your visit is taking place uh, uh, at the time of great difficulty for Ukraine, suffering uh, challenges, uh, Ukraine which is found in the war circumstances. Mm -hmm. So is there anything in your eminence which strikes you now? What changes can you notice since your last visit? Well, at first I have to say I'm full of admiration for what the church is doing not only for their own, but for the people of Ukraine. Everywhere we go, we see that the church is active to help, to feed the hungry, to take care of the sick and the elderly. So that means that during this period, the Catholic Church, Greek Catholic and Roman Catholic Church, has really been able to organize so much and to really make people aware of their vocation to be the voice of Christ, to be the hands of Christ in a situation of war, hardship and suffering. So we have to congratulate the church here for this wonderful growth in faith, hope and charity. Thank you, Your Eminence. And uh, now a question to you, Your Excellency. I don't know if you were aware, but uh, uh, the date you have chosen for your visit has a specific, a, sp a specific significance because 9th of May, so-called Victory Day, uh, uh, by, all, by a lot of Ukrainians was considered as a dangerous date. We uh, kind of expected that our Eastern neighbor will not leave us without a gift on that day. And actually on the eve before you arrived to Ukraine, you, you've heard that um, there were heavy shelling of Ukrainian territory. More than, um, more than 25 missiles were fired uh, toward uh, Ukraine. So uh, did you know about this uh, date and uh, were you not afraid of coming to Ukraine uh, on, on that date? We were certainly aware of the significance of the date. It, it wasn't chosen specifically, uh, but when our bishops' conference uh, decided at its meeting in March to offer a visit of solidarity. Um, there were two periods that were proposed as being possible, and this week happened to be one in which the Cardinal and I were both free to go. 
So I think we took it as a providence. And, uh, you know, I mean, w w one always lives in the hands of God. And um, I think, I mean, the, uh, the purpose of our visit is to be, uh, you know, to express our solidarity, to be, uh, to express our own hope for peace and to be able to do that in the context of violence, but also to see yesterday when, you know, there, there was a lot of rhetoric um, being voiced about the situation in Ukraine to see the peaceful, charitable efforts and to see that admirable determination of Ukrainians just to get on with life um, was, I mean, to me, very impressive and, um, and, and very encouraging, mm -hmm. very hopeful. Thank you. And yesterday, both of you had an opportunity to visit uh, newly liberated uh, uh, regions of Kiev, uh, namely Bucha and Makariu. And um, you could see on one hand that uh, people are returning to their normal life, they are reconstructed, they destroyed buildings. But on the other hand, you could have witnessed fresh wounds of the war, mm -hmm. right? So what were your impressions right after visiting Bucha and Makari? Could you share this, please? For me, it was a kind of repetition because I had been to Iraq when the same thing had happened. Areas were liberated from ISIS. And of course, you see the total destruction. You see the evilness of war, the evilness of men who can do th such things. But at the same time, you see that there's hope People want to return, people want to start anew, people want to do something beautiful. So we can say that in a time of war you see the worst of humanity, but you can also see the best. And I think that's very important to encourage people, to give them hope. And we met such loving people there. An elderly lady ca came to embrace us, to show her joy and her hope. So I would say the main thing I received was that there is always hope. The Lord is risen and we come here in the Paschal time. Yes. So that was my vision. Christ is risen and he is alive also here. Thank you. Thank you, Eminence. Your Excellency, would you like to comment on this? Uh, I, I share that impression and it was, it was very striking to see the, 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 the material wounds, uh, you know, and the, 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 the shelled out buildings and then next door, works of reconstruction. Or oh, we visited a little church um, that carried uh, the material wounds of shedding. And then next to it, um, you know, the, the priest and his wife and the team of the parish had uh, replanted a, a delightful garden. Um, that seemed to me a, a great um, symbolic act. At the same time, obviously, you, you realize just how deep the soul wounds are. And that's also why I was uh, very touched by the effort of Caritas and the, uh, and the church's charities to provide not only material help, but also psychological help, uh, spiritual guidance, uh, spaces of togetherness, spaces where people are able to tell their stories and be heard. And we can only uh, share in that resolve to help one another help wounds be healed. Great. And uh, can you share with us, with our viewers, uh, the situation of the Catholic Church in uh, Nordic countries? Uh, this reality is not that well known to us, so I'm sure there are some peculiarities of your church reality, which is, I guess, different from the rest of the Europe, in which circumstances you have to preach, to teach and uh, witness. And second question, what is the situation of Ukrainian refugees in your countries? Could you share this, please? The Nordic countries are traditionally Lutheran countries. They are very secularized, but they are, have also been very open to immigration. So our church has been built up by migrants from all over the world. We are very international communities with people coming from all over the world trying to build a new reality. So that's 
a challenge for us to bring all these people together to see that the Catholic faith can unite us in Christ and that we can also be a voice in a society that is so very secularized. In Sweden we are very happy to be able to welcome about maybe 50,000 Ukrainian uh, people. Uh, most of them are Orthodox, I think, but we have a very good Catholic presence with two priests and they do a wonderful work to unite all Ukrainians. And I had a very moving Easter ceremony this Easter in our cathedral at six o'clock in the morning. The cathedral was packed more than ever, I would say. Nearly 1,000 people came to celebrate that the Lord is risen. And for me that meant a lot to see those people have suffered so much that they could even smile and even be joyful because Christ is risen even for Ukraine, even for them. So our reality is very different, but still I think uh, the Catholic Church in our countries can show us that it is possible for people of different origin to be united in the faith. Thank you. Your Excellency? Yes, ours is, is, is a small and in some ways a very marginal church spread over a vast territory um, with that totally un improbable mixture of, um, of cultures and languages. Um, and I mean, as the Cardinal says, uh, in some ways it, it's, it's a kind of, it, it provides a, a laboratory of togetherness in a very globalized world. And I mean, I find to my astonishment that most of the time it actually works quite well and people are very keen to build up something together. I think something which is a particular source of inspiration and riches for us is the presence specifically of the Eastern Rites. Um, <coughs> and that helps us, I think, to broaden our horizon, uh, not to become too narrow in our perception of what it is to be a Christian and a Catholic, and uh, to be enriched by that broader tradition. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, final question, your visit in itself is a sign of solidarity, as you mentioned, and also a gesture, a gesture of support. So do you think, is there a message that the church in Ukraine in these dramatic circumstances could deliver to the church in Nordic countries and vice versa? We came here to help, but we were helped mm. to see this faith, to see this charity that is so alive here in Ukraine. So I would bring that message to our people that even in difficult circumstances, even in hardships and war, the faith, hope and charity is stronger than everything else. That will be my message from Ukraine. Thank I've you. also been very struck by that depth of prayer, um, by, by this rootedness in an expression of, of faith which is beautiful, um, even in the middle of a war which is of its nature ugly, um, and by the depth of charitable commitment, um, and by that, um, by that very grounded hope that in the long run, um, truth and charity and fraternity will win in the face of brute force um, and that that hope is animated not just by human idealism but really by faith in the continued embodied reality um, of, of the power of him who has trodden death underfoot and to, to meet that Paschal testimony in these circumstances has for me been profoundly moving and I will try to convey that um, to my brothers and sisters when I go home. Uh, certainly this uh, uh, Paschal uh, message, Easter message, uh, uh, has been resounding during this uh, interview, so I suggest that we finish our interview uh, 
uh, to give uh, also a little bit of authenticity to your local traditions by saying Christ is risen, indeed he is risen in your respective languages. Could you do that, please? Herren är verkligen uppstånden. Halleluja. Kristus är uppstånden. Han är sannolig uppstånden. Thank you very much for uh, being present in Ukraine, for visiting us, for your visit of solidarity, and also for being witnesses of witnesses of mm -hmm. resurrection mm -hmm. in this current uh, circumstances in Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.